talk is the last talk and uh, not the least of the subhash daddy is and akumar sir wants to you can take comments i will sort them by talk no no <laughs> ashok will will have questions yes. in the end it will be better we can yes. we can have uh, yes. maybe more questions then dr yes. subhash yes. Yes. on advances in amblyopia he is a director professor at the guru nanak eye hospital at new delhi and extensive experience in managing amblyopia and strabismus so uh, he's been the past president secretary of the strabismology society of india so dr subhash is going to talk to us on advances in amblyopia thank you dr rohit for your uh, nice introduction thanks aios and apos so basically mm. all of us are well aware about definition of amblyopia so it is correctable if appropriate measures are applied at appropriate time it is very important for diagnosis of amblyopia evidence of reduced visual acuity presence of amblyogenic factors and there should not be any alternate cause for loss of vision treatment of amblyopia whether it is questionable compliance failure rate is high treatment is challenging basic strategies are you present a clear retinal image to the amblyopic eye by eliminating the cause of visual deprivation and correcting visually significant refractive errors makes the patient to <clears throat> make use of amblyopic eye and you observe for recurrence various treatment modalities are effective correction only patching pinlization pharmacological therapy near visual activities video games mobile games refractive surgery smart glasses however none of them is full proof so when to start amblyopia therapy it is uh, always uh, it should be uh, tried at the earliest but better late than never which comes first amblyopia or surgery classical teaching is amblyopia should be treated prior to surgical intervention and surgery should be preferably done within 6 month of successful amblyopia therapy however lame et al uh, this suggested that performing surgery before completion of amblyopia therapy does not adversely affect motor or sensory outcome provided amblyopia therapy is continued post operatively basically most of the research on the treatment of amblyopia has been done by pediatric eye disease investigator group and basically they have focused on evaluating the comparative effectiveness of different amblyopia treatment regimes and their results have dramatically changed the amblyopia clinical practice pattern for many eye care providers so basically in ats 5 uh, they aim to evaluate effectiveness of refractive correction in moderate amblyopia and they concluded amblyopia resolved in 27% of the patient and improvement of more than two lines was seen in 77% of patient with refractive correction only so what is the clinical implication of this study so refractive correction is pre occlusion treatment phase of amblyopia in some cases occlusion and pinlization may not be required and secondly the child starts with better visual acuity and hence better compliance so it is reasonable to start amblyopia treatment with proper refractive correction alone for young children with anisometropic strabismic and combined mechanism amblyopia and a follow up should be done after 6 to 8 weeks until improvement in amblyopic eye visual acuity plateaus then occlusion uh, there is no shortcut or substitute for occlusion in treatment of amblyopia and it forces the patient to use amblyopic eye it inhibits inhibitory impulses arising from sound eye and it is best instituted in early infancy then ats 2a and 2b were Uh, done regarding the duration of patching and in ats 2a it was concluded full time patching versus six time patching in severe amblyopia and the results were equivocal in both uh, the groups and in uh, moderate amblyopia they compared two hours patching with six hours patching and they concluded there is similar improvement in both the groups so what is clinical implication of these studies full time patching is not always needed for a successful treatment outcome prescribing lesser amount of patching may promote better overall compliance with treatment when patching is prescribed it is reasonable to prescribe two hours of daily patching for moderate amblyopia and six hours of daily patching for severe amblyopia and some children with severe amblyopia will respond to as little as two hours of patching and in young children using an adhesive patch should be strongly considered so that picking is not <laughs> likely to occur there is no consensus over duration of patching different authors have recommended different duration of patching full time occlusion has been supported by many authors in the past however the popularity it commands among clinician is not always shared by patients and parents and major uh, failure to therapy is because of poor compliance and hence the recent trends are in favor of part time occlusion because of better compliance one fourth of successfully treated amblyopic patients will experience a recurrence within first year of treatment hence when children reaches a point where he or she is ready for cessation of treatment patching 
hours should be weaned before treatment is stopped. Carry home message is don't stop the occlusion therapy abruptly. Various indications of penalization are moderate amylopia and operative patients and isometropic amylopia maintenance therapy. And advantages of penalization are there is no risk of uh, occlusion amylopia, better correlated because of osmosis and comfort, and chances of binocular stimulations are there. So, should we go for patching or penalization? This issue was discussed in ATS. And in ATS 1, they compared uh, the patching versus atropine penalization for treatment of moderate amylopia in children of 3 to 7 years of age. And they concluded both are appropriate modalities for initial treatment of moderate amylopia. Then in ATS 4 daily, uh, atropine was compared with weakened atropine. And uh, they concluded weakened atropine produces an improvement in visual activity, which is similar to daily atropine. And in ATS 8, they compared weakened atropine augmented by planolens with weakened atropine alone for moderate amylopia. And they concluded uh, augmentation of weakened atropine with planolens does not substantially improve the visual activity. Then ATS uh, 9 and 11 were also conducted. So what is the clinical implication of various studies using atropine? Atropine penalization has similar treatment effect as two and six hours of prescribed patching. And hence, now it can be used as first line treatment from lipia or for patching failure cases. Daily atropine administration is not necessary. Twice per week schedule is also effective. And there is no reason to believe that atropine needs to be administered only on weekend days or uh, that needs to be sequential. Weekend atropine penalization has shown to be effective in treating both moderate and severe amyloid. So, however, in Indian circumstances, we have to keep in mind the limitation of ATS. Strict inclusion criteria hampered the study by including a limited number of patients. Methodology was not strict, that I make, making the results subject to many questions. Ethnic variation to treatment always remain a factor. Then is atropine safe in tropical countries and compliance was not monitored ob objectively in PEDIC group. And therefore it makes harder to interpret the results. Then another important question is, can amylopia be treated in adults? The answer is yes, because regardless of persons of age, the visual system which consists of eyes, brain and visual pathway can be retained due to brain's plasticity and the visual skill that needs to be retained is binocular vision. In ATS-3, uh, aim was whether amylopia can be successfully treated in older children and they concluded treatment can improve visual equity in older children. Then these perceptual learning uh, and adaptive training, uh, they have been tried, but uh, their major drawback is uh, yet to gain widespread support, tried in small number of patients, long-term follow-up is lacking and they are most of the studies are lab-based. Then <clears throat> levodopa, carbidopa was Thought to be a promising agent in augmenting conventional occlusion, the speed up recovery of visual functions, improve the uh, compliance, decreases the duration and cost of treatment. ATS 14 and 17 were conducted regarding uh, uh, role of levodopa, carbidopa. And now the question is, should we use levodopa in treatment of amylopia? Pedic has shown that certain treatment modalities don't work and levodopa has been used for uh, resistant cases of amylopia for years. However, the most of the recent studies found no improvement for amylopia through use of levodopa. And then Dr. Hoya Tal has stated in reference to levodopa as an urgent therapy for treatment of amylopia, it should persuade us that it is time to move on. 25 hours of study has not produced a convincing body of data to justify its clinical use. Then in ATS 6, NIRX was uh, done to determine whether performing near activities while patching from LIPA enhances improvement in visual activity. And they concluded performing common near activities does not improve the visual outcome in treatment of MLIPA. However, there are a lot of other studies which are contrary to the recommendations of ATS-6. The visual impairment is lifelong in MLIPA and the child dislike pets, eyeglasses, drops using MLIPA. Kai. So we have done a study regarding role of television games in treatment of amlyopia. Then why did we choose the television games? Because it is easily accessible in every household, colloidal influence it enjoys in our daily life and fondness with which children watch it. It is an effortless method of providing stimulus to amlyopic eye in children. We have noted that there was improvement in distance visual activity and near visual activity in both the group, but was found to be better in television room, uh, television game group. And Though ours was a small pilot study, we recommend use of near visual activities in the form of television games along with full-time occlusion and treatment of life. Yeah? And we have published in Journal of Star Business. 
then in ATS 19 examiner laser surgery for an isometropic uh, this is ongoing study. We have done a thesis regarding role of LASIK in adult and isometropic uh, amblyopia. And, and basically, Home et al. concluded that success rate in amblyopia due to an isometropia of more than six diopter was only 25% with conventional modalities and is directly related to degree of anisometropia. So probable candidates for refractive surgery may be anisometropic uh, cases of anisometropic amblyopia more than six diopters, conventional therapy failures, com poor compliance, estigmatism of more than 1.5, and poor visual activity at the start of treatment. But this should be tried as a last resort. In our study, uh, basically, uh, we recommend LASIK as an alternate uh, surgical modalities in cases of adult and isometropic amblyopia where conventional therapy has failed. Then is there any role of mobile games? Another thesis was done from our centers. Why mobile games were uh, chosen? Because they are easily available in every household, popular mode of entertainment. Entertainment and because loss of binocularity is one of the defining features of amblyopia, so now focus is shifted from monocular interventions to interventions that directly uh, target the binocular function. This has led to increased interest in development of amblyopia treatment that directly address the binocular dysfunction by promoting binocular vision and reducing inhibitory interactions within the visual cortex. So <clears throat> We recommend uh, uh, in our uh, thesis mobile game exercises as a form of near visual activity along with tours of fusion allowed improvement in visual equity. Then video games have been uh, studied by others also in PEDIC uh, in 2015. They compared effectiveness of one hour uh, per day with seven days week binocular gameplay to two hours per day uh, patching in children. With, and they found no statistically significant difference in the groups at uh, 16 weeks. Mm. Dr. Dadia, could you And in ATS-18, binocular eye treatment was not as good as two hours of uh, prescribed daily patching. Then uh, I would like to summarize uh, regarding use of this binocular treatment of amblyopia, a report by American Academy. There is no level of evidence to support the use of binocular treatment as a substitute for current therapies of amblyopia, including patching and optic treatment. Then ATS 21 and 22 are also uh, undergoing. Then amblyopia with eccentric fixation. This is a new area of research. Uh, though conventional occlusion uh, uh, has been uh, recommended by uh, Von Wooden et al., but there are certain uh, reports now that in these cases, uh, if you go for inverse occlusion, that is also equally effective. Then is there any role of omega fatty acids in treatment of amblyopia uh, based on their antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, neuroprotector, antipathetic, trophic stimulus, and neuron differentiation effect of Dr. omega Dadia, fatty acids? Could you conclude, found, please? Uh, one uh, half minute. Okay, uh, sure. We did not find any uh, useful effect. Smart glasses... <laughs> Uh, patching is most effective treatment, but has undesirable effects. And these smart glasses are ultra safe, proven efficacy. They are most advanced glasses for programmed intermittent occlusion, good compliance, prevent inverse amblyopia, and there are no side effects, but only thing is uh, uh, cost. So I would like to conclude conventional occlusion is still treatment of choice, although part-time occlusion is gaining acceptance after ATS reports, penalization should be considered as an alternate line of therapy, levodopies promising augmenting agent, though uh, uh, long-term results are not known, but recent uh, results don't recommend uh, use of Leodopa. Near exercises like television and mobile games are beneficial, and LASIK should be tried only in desperate cases of an isometropic amblyopia, and smart glasses are area of future research. Thank you.